I remember his face, his smile without humor, his blank eyes, the pale skin, maybe but a ghost of a man, maybe. But as I stood there within his gaze, I felt something more, something so real I could almost touch it. And when he spoke, I felt compelled to listen. The air that carried his words seemed to have so much more purpose, and the words themselves such an abundance of power and emotion that it was all I could do not to become lost in his voice. There are times when I sit, just to watch time pass. I can see the people down below, busying themselves in their daily routines. The multitudes cross the streets in unison, and then return again moments later. The idea that there are individuals in the crowds, and that each crowd is different each time, just fails to register. It's just one entity, one entity with each cell like another. There is no uniqueness, only a common existence. Perhaps, and now he looked at me, his empty eyes finally meeting with mine, and then I saw the pain, just for a moment, but it was there. Perhaps you may know what I mean. There was a slight pause, for composure I assumed, but that wasn't really his style, maybe for emphasis. But you, you probably see people, each individual face has a smile, has a heart, has a life, but to me, no. Not even a face. He turned away from me and looked down. The vast expanse between him and the life below had distanced him from the reality. He knew that. I knew that. But I failed to realize how far gone he was. I hadn't grasped how removed from life he had become. It was when he spoke again. I understood. I see. I see the empty hearts and souls and minds of the worthless majority. And I realize. I realize I just don't care. They could each die and I wouldn't. Couldn't feel anything. And I ask myself, is that so wrong? And this is the thing that disturbs me most. I just don't know anymore. He smiled at me again. In retrospect, it seems inappropriate. But as before, it was devoid of humor. It was of reassuring. He felt the need to reassure my faith. My faith in the grand scheme of things. He was right to do so. And in return, I smiled back. You understand why you're here. His question was unnecessary. We all knew. But with the asking of it came the reality of the situation. Succession. Replacement was too strong a word. Succession implied a continuity that was essential. Yes, I replied. And we stood face to face, the time passing until his grayness decayed to white, and white to opaque, and opaque to nothingness. And I was he, and he was gone. Gods come and gods go, but God must live on. And with a succession as one becomes jaded, or loses faith, or fills with despair, one shall succeed him, and so the belief remains unchanged, a world without end.